So this video is going to be a little bit more like a vlog, I guess. Um, I just want it to be a really quick build. So I'm making a new curl for a Renaissance Fair Fair event, and with that I need to make a new chemise. I've never made a medieval chemise. It's pretty much like an 18th century one where it's just a big rectangle. I haven't decided whether I want to do an S sleeve or a gusset sleeve, but I think I will go with an S sleeve because you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. I will clarify when I actually get to making the sleeves. Anyway, um, this is three meters of cotton voile that I bought for this. Um, it's just really lightweight, um, definitely need 100% cotton because it's going to be warm, it's going to be against my body all the time. For a little bit more context, um, the chemise is the first garment that is worn historically throughout the ages. It is usually just something really lightweight, really simple to keep the proper clothes off the body um, so it keeps them protected and clean um, and so it's really important and not to be skipped and so let's get started. So here are my prof very professional plans for it. Um, <laughs> I've sketched out the kirtle with all the measurements and I've also done that, that for the chemise. As you can see it is legit just two big rectangles, one for the front, one for the back. I will sew up the side seams and then cut up a neck hole, a neck hole here and then it will be gathered um, down to fit my neck. Um, I'm just using the width of the fabric to keep it really simple. As I mentioned I'm not sure about the sleeves, um, usually if you were to do straight sleeves you would add a gusset in which is just a little triangle that goes under the arm to retain movement. Um, but I don't think I'm going to do that because it also adds a lot of volume and the curdle sleeves are going to be quite fitted so I don't think it's a good idea to put that much volume underneath. So I had just figured out, sorry I'm not really in shot but I'm not wearing any makeup so I'm not really... Um, anyway, I had just figured out an angle so that you could actually see onto my floor as I cut this out um, but then I realised these are just rectangles, this is cotton and cotton rips on the grain. So I made a little cut and then I ripped it just to see if it would work. And yes, it, it will. So all I'm going to do is um, measure along the salvage edge for how much I need. Um, because it'll just be the length the length from my shoulder down to... I think I measured it just a bit, bit beneath the knees. Um, yeah, so that's just what I'll do. I think it should be so much easier. measure and then this is honestly one of the most pleasing sounds ever as well so I'm hoping that my really busy street will be quiet for just a minute so satisfying emergencies cannot wait. Um, so I'm just going to iron this now because I did pre-wash it um, because this is going to be against my body and it's going to be warm in my kit. A little bit sweaty. And so I need to be able to just throw it in the machine to wash it. Um, so I pre-washed it so that it shrunk as much as it would shrink. Um, and as you can see it's a bit crinkly. So I'm just going to iron it real quick and then pin and do up the side seams. I've just made my first mistake. That's the thing with really simple things. Um, sometimes you just don't really think them through. Um, I hadn't realised how wide this fabric actually is. It is uh, 58 or 57 inches wide. Um, and because the kirtle is quite fitted, I really don't want it to have that much bulk around the waist. So what I think I'm going to do to avoid wasting any fabric is I'm just going to cut so I measured across my hips, the widest point, and so I really only need this to be 25 inches wide. And so what I'm thinking I'm going to do is just cut this in half, and use one half for the front, one half for the back, and then I'll put in some of those dreaded gauze 
um, and I'll cut them out of the small scrap that I had before. Um, it's quite an easy fix. It wasn't really a mistake, it was just poor calculations really. I think numbers just confuse me sometimes. So yeah, that's what I'm going to do now. So I've just realised I've actually done this wrong. Uh, usually you cut the whole length of the chemise in one go so that it sort of loops up above your head and then you cut a hole there for the neck so that there is no shoulder seam. I am not going to waste any fabric. I'm just going to make a shoulder seam. So that's the first seam I'm actually going to sew. I'm going to baste it um, and then fit it to see how wide I want the neckline to be. Um, then mark it and sew that seam, um, and then I'll sew up the side seams. I'll measure around my arm so that I know to leave the space for the armhole, um, and yeah, measure from there. So it doesn't look like much at the moment. Um, I just did the shoulder seam, um, it's just basted, and I also basted up a bit of a side seam, um, just so I could try it on and mark where I would need the gores. So I'm doing it from the hip down to keep the volume and the bulk of it out of the waist. Um, so that's what I'm going to do next. It kind of looks like a token at the moment. Um, I'm just going to go cut out the gores um, and then sew them on. Um, and so I'll do the bias edge to the grain and then sew up the side seam um, and then sew up the shoulder seam and then it just should just need hemming and finishing the neckline which I'm going to gather I think it'll look really cute um, but yeah just a, just a square of fabric So it is a new day, I went out yesterday and I didn't end up getting a lot done. But what I did do was I sewed on the um, gorse. So when I started this um, small, quick project, it was only meant to take a couple of hours and I could get it done in this weekend. However, I then decided that, <laughs> why not, I can just um, hand sew it. Uh, yeah, so now I'm doing that. I've hand sewed the gorse on. And right now I'm just going to press this seam open, trim one side off, and then fold it over so that it is a flat felt seam. And then you're going to sew that down by hand. And then I need to do up the side seams and I'll baste them in place, leave the gap at the top for the armhole, and do the shoulder seam because that's still only basted. Yeah, so that's the plan for now. Um, seams are pressed and done and ready to be felled except for this one. I was using a massive pair of scissors and I got a little bit carried away trimming it so that now it is way too close to the stitching line. So I am going to go in and redo the stitching line just 
just like an eighth lower. <sighs> Mistakes happen, people. <laughs> I think this video started out to be a really simple and quick, quick and easy build. And now I've just made mistake after mistake. So it's more of a what not to do video. So here we are. Um, I've sewn up the side seams on all um, I've, I've sewn up the seams on the cores and the side seams. Um, they're droopy there because of some problems calculating triangles. Don't judge me, maths is hard. Um, I've also sewn up the shoulder seams, so now these just need to be pressed and flat felled. Um, but otherwise, it's looking like a chemise, which is all I really need it to be. Um, I will, before I hem it, I will trim off that, those droopy bits there. Currently, it's got some kind of elven vibes, I think. <laughs> but yeah, it should be good. And then I will draft the sleeves and make them. And once I've actually finished the overdress, only then will I tackle the neckline. Because I think that will work better that way. So this is meant the neckline will be gathered so that it will sit up here, like so. Hopefully. We'll see. This is a sleeve mock-up. It's got the medieval S shape at the top. It's a bit wonky, we'll see what happens. Um, but I've trued the sides to make sure they match up and the length should also be fine. It's slightly curved. Um, and then this edge will be gathered down to fit my arm measurement. So what I'm going to do now is um, iron this, sew it up on the side seams, gather the bottom and fit in the edge into the armhole of the actual chemise to try on. So here we are with the sleeve mock-up. I think I've realized that I've made a big mistake with the shoulder seam. As you can see, it refuses to stay on my shoulders. I'm not sure if that will change once I cut the neckline and gather it, but it just won't stay up there. Otherwise, the sleeve, the sleeve is too tight at the top and too short. So, this is meant to sit up here, and, or is it? This might work, I don't know. I could shape, I could try to shape the armhole with the, my pattern from the kirtle, but I'm not sure if I should. It's very confusing because everyone always just uses the rectangle shapes, but no one really talks about shaping the, the, the armhole, but I guess that's the point of the straight sleeve and gussets kind of thing but I decided to, to do an S sleeve which probably isn't meant to go with a square based chemise I might keep it as is I kind of like this I don't know I'm not even sure any of these look any different but we're finally making progress um, the shoulder finally sits right sleeve is comfortable I like the amount of gathering it's still too short I'm going to add three inches and I completely changed the pattern I drafted a new one, um, which is shallower S and larger because that's just what it needed. And yeah, progress guys. Very happy with this. So I'm just going to add some length and then I'll be ready to cut out, but that'll probably be for tomorrow because it is now 11pm and I have work again tomorrow. Here we are. Um, so it's another new day, another post full time work working time. Um, this is my final sleeve pattern. I just thought I'd show you compared to my first one. So the first one I drafted was um, based on a really quick like no fuss online tutorial. It just really wasn't working out for me. Um, I think it's just because of my weird arm really. Um, and because of the weird I mentioned previously about the weird armhole situation. So this sleeve however has worked out really great. Um, this was drafted with this book which is creating historical clothes. So it's technically a little bit later in the centuries, um, but it's got the shape that I want. I didn't think it really matter. And 
So I'd also just show you in comparison with the first pattern I made. So you can see that the curved S shape is a lot shallower on the new one. Um, and the sleeve is also a lot bigger. I had just mismeasured my arm, I think. Um, and this, this really wasn't working. And it's also longer, which was one of the issues. Um, so with this one, I had just drafted it and then did, I did the cut and slash method to widen the hem. And then I just used this width actually to sort out the new sleeve so that I didn't have to cut and slash it again. Um, and yeah, so I'm about to cut out the sleeves. And then I will also hand sew these because what is life? And yeah, I'll check in later. So for the chemise I tried it on because this way I can set the neckline of it. I've been waiting to finish the kirtle to see where I want the neckline of the chemise to go and I do want it to show a little bit because I think it would be really nice to show the gathers of it. Um, kind of like the sleeves. So I think that's the look I'm going to go for. So I've marked it roughly onto here and I think that's what I'm going to be doing tonight. I'm going to uh, start with the kirtle because I can't flat, flat, flat anything anymore uh, and instead I'm going to work on the neckline of the chemise. So I think last time I checked in on this, um, I was uh, marking out the neckline. So what I did yesterday was I ran two small um, gathering stitches along the neckline and I've gathered it down to what I think will work quite nicely. Um, and that's the last thing I need to do on this is to finish the neckline. I am now going to iron this bias state in half. It's just plain cotton but it's quite stiff which I quite like. I'm running out of it which makes me really sad and I can't remember why I bought it. Um, Anyway, it's the same thing I used on the cuffs, so the neckline should have a similar effect to this. It's not as densely gathered as I wish it was, um, but I would have had to cut it differently to justify the amount of bulk at the top compared to the waistline, which is what I wanted to keep um, narrow. Well, it's not narrow, but not as wide as it um, could be. So yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now, and then I shall uh, hand sew it on. There's the whole thing is hand sewed, so I don't know why I mentioned that. Uh, but I would also just mention real quickly that um, so what I did with the gathers is that I did the two rows of stitching and then I stripped them, which is a Victorian thing, I think I'm not sure. Where it's basically you've got a pin and you just move it along and it makes them all really nice and even. Um, however, they will still move around. So what I did after that was I went in and like did a really loose back stitch across it to try and secure the gathers in place and they move less easily now, so that's really good. I'll just be really careful as I pin on the bias tape to make sure that it doesn't, you know, they don't move around and it'll be looking really gross. So yeah, fun of action. <laughs> 